Welcome back. This is the second video on storages in Kubernetes. In last video, we saw about volumes and why we need volumes to store data instead of using the container file system. In this video, we'll see in detail about persistent volumes. This is the high level diagram of how volumes are used in Kubernetes. When creating a volume, we'll create an external storage type. We'll define it and then we will link it to the volume in pod configuration and in pod configuration we will link this volume to container this is how volumes are generally defined but coming to persistent volumes we will follow the same process but instead of directly linking this external storage to the pod volume we will break it and create this complete step as a independent object to understand this concept completely we need to know how we create this complete independent object in detail we will create three additional objects one is storage class the second one is pv and the third one is pvc now let's see these steps in detail so the first step is to create a storage class followed by pv means persistent volume then persistent volume claim and a pod where we will link this persistent volume claim now coming to first step the storage class in this storage class we will generally define what is the storage class provisioner means who will provide the storage it may be either a cloud storage or an nfs or a local storage and in this demo i will use local now coming to the first step storage class this is the sample yaml file api version is storage.kates.io this is the version 1 the kind will be storage class and followed by provisioner so this is the place where we will define who is providing this storage. So we need to know about who is the provisioner. These are the two fields we need to be aware of. Allow volume expansion is true and the reclaim policy is delete or retain. There are only two options for this. If we don't give any option, the default one will be delete. This means once the persistent volume is deleted, we want to either keep the data or we want to delete it. It will be defined by this field. And allow volume expansion is true. This is a boolean value true or false. If we give this option as true, we can increase the storage capacity even while the pod is live. And once the storage class is defined, the next thing is to define the persistent volume. And while creating the persistent volume, we need to have this storage class name. So this is the field we need to be aware of storage class name. Now this is a sample file for persistent volume. The version will be v1 kind will be persistent volume. And this is the name for this particular PV. And here we need to give the storage class name. This is what we previously defined. And these are the steps individual for this particular pv i am requesting for 1 gb of storage and access mode is rewrite many and this is the host path where the data will be stored as i am using local storage this path will be created in any of the node where the pod will be created and the other field which we need to be aware of is the access modes there are three type of access modes read write many read write once and read only many so for this demo i will create three pvs one with one gb of storage space and read write once the second one is one gb with read write many and the third one is two gb with read write once now this is the yaml file for pvc the version will be v1 kind will be pvc persistent volume claim and this is the name for this particular one followed by storage class name this should be same as the one which we created and here access mode and the amount of space we need for a particular pod and we will create two pvcs for this demo one is 1gb requirement and the access mode is read write once the other one is 0.5 GB with read write many. Now once I create a PVC from this file, it will look for any PVC which match this requirement. 
and here i can see this one the first one so it will go and link to this one and once i create a pvc from this file it will look for the rest of the pvs in the same storage class it will match to this one even the required space is more than what we need for the pod still it will be bounded to this pv and the rest of the 0.5 space will be unused and we don't have a pvc for this one so it will be available until a new pvc is created and final step is to create a pod and then link the pvc to this pod and the definition of the pod will be similar how we use in the last video volumes instead of directly defining the volume types here we will use the persistent volume claim and then the claim name now let's see this creation in detail i don't have any pods running and i don't have any storage class sc is short form for storage class so this is the yaml file the name is local storage and the provisioner for this local storage is no provisioner because i am creating it locally and then allow volume expansion is true and reclaim policy is delete let's create a storage class from this file storage class is created and these are the fields we defined now i will create persistent volumes now i have defined three ml files in a single file now this is the definition for the first pv where i am giving 1 gb of storage and access mode is read write once and this is the path storage data 1 storage data 2 followed by storage data 3 these are the three pvs with different capacity and different access modes so three pvs have been created and uh, we have the details here the capacity access modes and the storage class name and as of now we can see the status is available Now this is the first file for pvc access mode is read write once and storage is 1 gb so once i create this file it will be linked to this pv local pv1 because it is satisfying this requirement now let's see the details once again You can see the status of this PVC is pending because we have not linked it to any pod. I'll create the other two PVCs. So these are the three PVs and PVCs with different requirements. And this is the YAML file for the first pod. In this pod, I am creating a simple container with the busy box image. And the command is to echo a text hello pod1 and sleep for some time. And this is the volume where the data will be stored inside the pod slash data. And for this pod, I am using PVC1. And here is the definition for PVC1. The access mode is read write once and storage is 1 GB. Now let's create a pod from the first file. And if you see the status once again, it will be bounded. So the first one is being bounded to the first PV. Because this satisfies the requirement. Here the capacity is 1 GB, access mode is read write once. And this matches to this one in the three PVs which are present here. 1 GB of capacity and the access mode is read write once. I have created one more pod. And now if you see the second PVC is also bounded. 
for the second port i used this pvc and once i created that port it has been linked to this pv it satisfies the requirement here the requirement is 1 gb of capacity and the access mode is read write many and here it's read write many now i'll create the final port And for the third port, I am using this PVC, the last one. Here we can see even after creating the port, the status is pending and the status of PVC is also pending. And here the PV is available. because the definitions are not matching here the storage capacity is matching i have 2 gb available space and here 2 gb and here the access mode is not matching i'm giving read write many here but here it is read write once until the requirements of this pvc and pv are not matching the status of pvc and the pod will be in pending status and this is the process of how we create a PV and link it to the pod. So we need to create the local storage first, followed by the PV and then PVC. And once we create the PVC, it will be linked to the pod. For example, point of view, we need to remember two things. The first one is persistent volume claims is linked to namespace. When creating any PVC, we need to be sure under which namespace it's created. Here we can see namespace is true. And when creating a PV, there is no requirement to mention the namespace because PVs are created cluster wise. Similarly, if you come down for storage class also while creating it, we don't need to mention any namespace. This is the first thing we need to remember. The second thing is how we delete these resources. If you create any PV or PVC during the exam time and you have not created properly and you want to delete that resource. While deleting this process, we need to be very careful. If you delete any PV instead of deleting the PVC first, then the command will be stuck and we will lose a lot of time during examination. And this is the process you need to follow while deleting these resources. First, we need to delete the pod. and then followed by deleting the PVC. And once this PVC is deleted, then we can delete the PV. These two are not linked, so there is no issue. I'll delete this one. Now the port is deleted, I will delete the PVC which is linked to this port. And now we can see here once I deleted this PVC, the status of this PV is released. And now we can go and delete the PV. To understand persistent volumes, we need to understand the complete process how we create storage class, persistent volume, then create a persistent volume claim and then how we link it to a pod. I hope you got something from this video and if you like this video, please share with your friends and subscribe to my channel me Ali. Thank you and see you in the next one.